Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the euro and its effect on European trade. Um, around the time most of us were born, the European Union was discussing a way to unite many of the smaller Central European countries into a single currency. This evolved into the euro, which was adopted in 1999 on January 1st. Now, in this presentation, I'm going to tell you how the European euro has generally caused a positive increase in European trade since its adoption in 1999. And we'll be specifically looking at the eurozone, which is where it's used. Now, we're going to take this in three levels. First, we're going to look at the local part of it, which is just trade within the eurozone. Then we're going to upgrade to global trade, which is like cross-Atlantic trade with America and stuff. And then we're going to look at the euro specifically and see how strong it is as a currency. Now, within the eurozone, the positive increase has shown from the trade between the two individual countries involved. Now, there are many individual countries within the eurozone, and a study by Pandas Shinchukarn of the Mahadol University International College has shown that the results show that two countries share the euro currency trade somewhere between 9% and 14% more than other country pairs. What this means is that trade between the individual countries has increased over the last decade. And if you remember, there's been a recession in the last decade in America, which shows that the euro in the eurozone has survived this entire recession decade. Now, this means for banks. For banks, this means that they can profit from previously unprofitable areas, which was which used to be other countries that didn't have the same currency. Without this exchange rate, they can easily like take money from other countries and deposit them within their own institutions, which is good for banks, obviously, since they have money. Now, the no exchange rate risk is also used in international <coughs> trade. Without these exchange rates, the entire region is basically used as a single country or coalition. Uh, America and other bigger countries cannot trade with them as a single entity, which as according to Salvador Gil Pareja, who is uh, a review of international economics, has increased tourism by 6.5%. Now, this increased tourism has obviously given more revenue for each individual country and has brought up weaker currencies. Okay, because of these weaker currencies being no more, no longer a problem, this has effectively strengthened the euro as a whole. Now, according to the Economist Intelligence Unit, if the euro area is treated as a single entity, which means as a single nation, its economic and fiscal position looks no worse and in some respects rather better than that of the US or the UK. This is in reference to the 2008 recession crisis that we've all experienced and probably not benefited much from it. Now, looking at all three levels, the local trade, international trade, and the strong financial security of the euro, I'm pretty sure that we can say that the euro has survived this economic decade of recession and has come out to be stronger than it used to be. And the European euro has caused a generally positive increase in European trade since its adoption on midnight of January 1st in 1999. Thank you. Right, well, I like that you identified the subject pretty clearly and you give us a little bit of background, kind of lead us into what's going on. Uh, you do have a claim here, uh, but uh, it sounds sort of ambiguous and you do want to make sure that you highlight that that is in fact the main proposition because otherwise it just sounds like it's kind of an informative speech. So you want a little clear uh, declarative sentence there. There's a pretty good preview the way you've structured it so it shouldn't be too hard to follow. And in the body of the speech you do an okay job 
job of signposting those secondary claims so we're not going to get too lost. I do think that there are some concepts that uh, rush by in a short amount of time that are sort of complicated, and uh, we need to be able to understand those concepts in order to make the same inference that you're making. Uh, the whole thing about exchange rates, I think, uh, goes by much too quickly without a practical example for us to understand, and as a result, it's less persuasive than it might be in your mind uh, to uh, the average listener. Uh, I did think on uh, some of the arguments concerning uh, the economic progress made in uh, the Eurozones that you had some good data. Uh, there's some information about trades, for instance, about trade, and then there was some information about tourism that you did a pretty good job citing information on. So uh, that, I think, was a little bit easier to make sense of, although I'm still having a hard time figuring out if uh, the value of the euro is high and strong in comparison to uh, other currencies, why, why tourism would be up. It would, seems like it would be down because the cost of tourism would be higher. I think you need to have explanations for those kinds of things. Uh, we're get, kind of getting conclusionary information here, and then the assumption is that it's because of the euro that's uh, produced has produced these particular kinds of results. At one point, you talk about how great the eurozone is and uh, how it's weathered the storm uh, very well, but at another point, you basically say it has done no worse and maybe slightly better than the U.S., so I'm not exactly sure which point of view I'm supposed to be taking. Am I supposed to be taking the point of view that it is, you know, it's the rock that has prevented the European zone from having any problems whatsoever, or they've got the same problems we do and it hasn't hurt them any. Uh, that, I think, is almost contradictory and a little bit confusing. Um, I think the generalizations could be a little bit stronger with more data. Uh, like I said, I think you need a little bit more explanation. I thought you did a nice job trying to present, except that you are rushing sometimes. Uh, and you've got more time that you can speak, so don't be shy about adding some extra explanation and definitely citing some more information because you have the ability to do that with the time you've got. All right, thank you.